Hello YouTube, I'm Hamish Todd at the International Rice Research Institute and I'm working on C4 rice, one of humanity's best chances for alleviating world hunger. So today about a billion people suffer from undernourishment and dwindling resources and a growing population mean that this number could grow by several more billion. The C4 rice project offers a way to help this though. Rice is the most widely grown food in the world, but the thing is that on a molecular level the leaves of the rice plant can sometimes be pretty terrible at what they do. We want to make them more like the leaves of plants like sugarcane, which as I'll explain in this video, use a technique called C4 photosynthesis to process air in a way that's safer for the plant. If we can make rice leaves do C4 photosynthesis, then farmers will be able to secure vastly more food without expending any extra resources. This is why the goal of C4 rice has brought together an international team of dozens of scientists, mainly based here in the Philippines. And along the way towards that goal, we have learned some pretty awesome things. So. Here's C4 rice explained in 8 minutes. The place we have to start is photosynthesis, that most wonderful process by which plants and also algae and some other strange organisms turn light and carbon dioxide into food for themselves. Photosynthesis is extremely important. Living things need energy, and directly or indirectly we get it all from that inexhaustibly hot and shiny thing that is currently behind that cloud over there and which I wish could be nicer to the skin of redheads. Using the sun to photosynthesis synthesized food is how the majority of life on Earth gets by. Animals like humans can come off as a bit pathetic next to plants because we can only survive off the food that they have already photosynthesized for us. There were organisms that did okay before photosynthesis came along, but to find food they had to live in volcanoes and places like that. So when photosynthesis arrived it was a gigantic leap forward. All the more impressive is that photosynthesis became this ridiculously complicated process enlisting dozens of weirdly interacting machines across several completely separate production lines. Though fortunately, we do not have to know every little thing about photosynthesis. To understand C4 rice, the only molecule you need to know about is this one. This is Rubisco, an indispensable tool for photosynthesis that first evolved along with the rest of the process three and a half billion years ago. So, you know, just one quarter of the entirety of time itself there. To imagine what Rubisco does, think of a tiny coffee percolator. You put water and carbon dioxide into it where they'll be smooshed together with this one other molecule, and out of it you'll get nutritious little bits of sugar. And this is a pretty big deal because it's about the only way that something edible can be made out of carbon straight from the air, and carbon is a pretty important atom to be eating. This is why Rubisco is all over the place. It fills the cells of absolutely every photosynthesizing organism we know of, making it by far the most common protein on our planet. And you know, it might be common on some other planets too. Getting closer to talking about world hunger now. So Rubisco is popular, and though we might often expect something really popular to be really good, it turns out that this is not the case. We've just seen that Rubisco's job is to turn carbon dioxide into bits of sugar, but here's the thing. Rubisco cannot tell the difference between carbon dioxide and oxygen. When Rubisco finds an oxygen molecule, it'll get to work on it just as if it were carbon dioxide. If it does this, instead of creating the carbon-based sugar, it ends up with this totally different and wasteful product, which at best will do nothing for the plant, and at worst will actually poison it. To help consider this situation, imagine you were given a robot that made coffee. Great coffee. Coffee so good that from the first sip you know you will never again drink coffee from anywhere but this robot. But then it turns out that your robot is unable to tell the difference between coffee beans and cat poo. Whenever this robot detects the presence of either coffee beans or cat poo somewhere in your house, it immediately tracks them down and attempts to make coffee with them. Let's say that approximately two-thirds of the time you're getting the world's greatest coffee, and one-third of the time you get a resource-wasting pile of sh- And this is the riddle that Rubisco presents to the people who want to make crops better. Given this ridiculous robot, what are you going to do? First you think about trying to fix or redesign the Rubisco robot, but Mother Nature has been expected experimenting with it for literally billions of years. And her conclusion has been that the oxygen reaction is an unavoidable side effect of the way Rubisco works, so quick fixes are not an option here. The next solution you consider might be to get rid of your beloved but poo-producing cat, but there's a big problem with this too. As we all know, carbon dioxide and oxygen are all around us, and they come hand in hand whenever a leaf takes in air, so in our analogy we might say that the cat is bringing in both the coffee beans and the poo. But okay, 
there is a real solution to this, and it's pretty simple. Separation. All you have to do is to keep the cat away from the robot. Whenever you have coffee beans, you just package them up and send them to the part of your house where the robot is. And fundamentally, that's all there is to C4 photosynthesis. This is the leaf of a C4 plant, and here's a slice through that leaf. What we see here are the veins that you feel when you touch a blade of grass. All the rubisco is trapped inside those chubby cells, protected from the open air so that no oxygen can get in. If you look near the surface of the leaf, there's no rubisco at all. The only job of these cells is to filter out oxygen and send packages of carbon dioxide inwards. Four carbon atoms per package, by the way, hence C4 photosynthesis. The leaf of a normal rice plant looks more like this. About every cell here contains rubisco and gets the same amount of oxygen with all the wastefulness that that implies. C4 photosynthesis first evolved about 30 million years ago in response to increased amounts of oxygen in the air. But here's the cool thing. At least 60 unrelated plant species have evolved C4, a startling example of convergent evolution, kind of like how birds, bats, and pterodactyls independently developed similar tools for flying. The convergence here is particularly great because it suggests that the evolution of C4 photosynthesis requires only a few small, easy changes to a normal plant's genes. Plus, it means that we have a lot more information to draw on. Convergent evolution only happens when a certain adaptation is so rich in universal benefits that disparate species will overcome their differences to try and get a piece of it. And it's that universality that makes me excited to work on C4 rice. Well, and the fact that we're projected to save a billion people in our first 25 years of production. This photo contains about the largest number of people I feel I can imagine in my head. That was the Jerry World Stadium, and it seats about 100,000 people. So look, if you were to fill up one Jerry World Stadium with malnourished people for each individual word I've said in this video, then you'd be looking at the people that C4 Rice is expected to save in its first five years! Now I should say that there are no certainties in science. We may save a billion people, or we may fall short, or hey, we may save more. All we can say is that among the things that we know of, there's nothing that should stop us. And the project's going well so far. We met our three-year goals and are on track to easily meet our six-year goals, so please look out for us in 2025 when we expect to be shipping, and think of us when you hear generalizations about GMOs. Before I go, perhaps some of you are asking whether there's a catch to all this, but C4 rice requires no extra fertilizers, takes in less water, inhales more carbon carbon dioxide, and we will be distributing the seeds free. Yes, that's right, completely free of charge. This was Hamish Todd at the International Rice Research Institute, and if you have any questions, please leave them below, or you can get on Twitter and send them to either Erie or me, and we will try to answer them. See you there.